Good morning. I hope everyone is doing well today. It's my pleasure to be back with you this morning to talk a little more about cybersecurity, spam, scams, and safeguarding private information, especially during these COVID-19 pandemic times. Spam. What is it? Spam is any kind of unwanted, unsolicited digital communication that is typically sent out in bulk. It's estimated that spam makes up 85% of all daily email. Around 98% of spam is harmless digital advertisements about products and services. It's the other 2% that you need to be wary of. The other 2% make up things like phishing emails that attempt to steal our logins, promises of money from princes and malware spam that tricks us into downloading attachments loaded with destructive malware. There are many different types of spam, including advanced fee scams, phishing and spear phishing, and malware spam. Let's talk a little more about the advanced fee scams. Advanced fee scams. These types of scams are typic typically referred to as the Nigerian scam or the 419 scam because the scam orig originated in Nigeria and 419 refers to the section of the Nigerian criminal code the scams violate. This scam typically involves a mysterious sender offering you a vast reward in exchange for a cash advance, usually as some sort of processing fee required to unlock the larger amount. Once you send the money to the cyber criminal, the sender disappears with your money. These scams have been around for a long time and have mutated and migrated into many different iterations. This goes back to my pre previous presentations that if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Be wary of anyone offering you large sums of money for a small inconvenience of your time. All right, let's move on and talk about phishing and spear phishing. Phishing is a type of attack where actors attempt to trick the user into clicking a link, opening an attachment, or even calling a phone number to gain the user's login information, steal personal information, such as social security numbers, or even install a virus on your computer. You can protect yourself by following a few basic principles of safe browsing. Exercise caution when you receive an unsolicited email with links, attachments, or attempts to get you to call a phone number. Links are easily spoofed and can take you to a lookalike page. An attachment may have malicious code that will attempt to run when you open it. Calling a phone number listed in the email will connect you with a fraud. What can you do to protect yourself? Verify with the sender that they, intend to send, that they intended to send you an email. This will ensure that the email is safe. If an email is asking you to call a number, take a few minutes and look up the number for that particular institution on your own. For example, if you get an email from your bank that asks you to call a number, don't call the number listed in the email Call the number on the back of your bank card or on your bank statement. They will be able to tell you if the email that was sent is legitimate. COVID-19 specific phishing emails. COVID-19 has brought about its own phishing emails to attempt to trick you into providing personal information, sending money, or supplying password information into a fake website. In a real world study, coronavirus related messages were the second most clicked on phishing email. Emails with an urgent request to check passwords immediately were the most popular. Reports have shown an increase in email subjects claiming to reveal new login alerts, password resets, and author unauthorized access to account messages related to social media accounts are increasing in popularity and being clicked on by unsuspecting users. You'll see listed here some of the real world emails that are impersonating the WHO and the CDC, as well as some emails related to COVID-19. Please make sure that you visit websites directly without clicking on links in the emails you receive. This will ensure you aren't being redirected to a different site attempting to steal information from you. COVID-19 scams. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought about its own version of scams and false information. 
Cyber criminals will use anything at their disposal to attempt to defraud you of your personal information or money. These scams can be distributed via email, online ads, phone calls, social media posts, text message, and any other form of communication you could think of. Charity scams. The charity or donation scams are going to ask you to donate to a charity you probably don't recognize or one with a similar name to a well-known charity. They will probably claim to support research or pay for medical bills. These fake charities will only steal your money and use it for their own personal gain. You can verify a charity's tax exemption status by going to the IRS tax exemption site, apps.irs.gov slash apps slash EOS. I know that's a little bit long. We've got it posted here on the PowerPoint and we'll also uh, upload this information uh, to the portal. Social media scams. Cyber criminals have been using social media to distribute false information and capitalize on the panic. Make sure to visit trusted sites like the CDC, WHO, FTC, and the BBB. Contact tracers. Now that America is starting to open up again, contact, trace, contact tracers from the state health department are attempting to track individuals who may have been expo exposed to COVID-19 and are an important part to the road to recovery. There are scammers that are trying road to recovery. There are scammers pretending to be contract tracers so that they can profit off of you. They are trying to steal your identity, your money, or both. You can protect yourself by never giving money to a contact tracer. Don't give your social security number or financial information, and don't click on any links or download anything sent from a contact tracer. Contact tracers should only be contacting you via phone while they may send a notification via text or email that they will be contacting you. Robocalls. Robocalls from cyber criminals pretend to be government organizations, family members in distress, or banks and credit card companies are on the rise. These calls will often attempt to cause a panic response and then ask for some sort of payment. Gift cards have become a popular choice. We have actually had residents receive emails asking for assistance with buying a gift card for another person because they were unable to due to a medical condition. The resident recognized the scam and stopped responding to the scammer. Be wary of anything that is out of the ordinary or seems a little fishy. Let's move on and talk about two scams that I find particularly interesting. Tech support scams. I know I've talked about these before, but tech support scams are popular. Uh, they use panic and fear to induce you to giving control of your computer and eventually your money to the cyber criminal. This scam will typically start out by either receiving a pop-up on your computer asking you to call a number to receive support regarding an infection or by a random phone call from a, t from a fake tech support company. Once the call has been answered, the fake tech support person will attempt to get you to provide them with access to your computer. Once they have access to your machine, they will look around and let you know that in order to fix the issue, you will need to pay them. Once you pay, it will appear that your computer has been cleaned up, but in reality, you most likely never had an infection in the first place. Here's what you can do to keep this from happening. Don't click on any links or call a phone number. Don't send any money or make a wire transfer, and don't pay with a gift card. Legitimate businesses will never ask you to pay with a gift card. Don't give anyone your bank account, credit card, or other payment information, and don't give anyone control of your computer. Legitimate companies do not display pop-up warnings that ask you to call a toll-free number about viruses or security problems, and they won't contact you unsolicited. If you feel you have an infection on your computer, please reference the John Knox Village Directory of Recommended Computer Repair Businesses. Another scam that I find particularly interesting is the cell phone scam or account takeover scam. This scam, while not seen frequently, is of relatively low technology but involves your mobile, service, mobile phone service provider. This scam involves a malicious actor contacting your mobile phone character and attempting to order equipment without your permission. When the caller is unable to identify themselves, 
as an authorized account holder, the service provider may offer to send a text message with a verification code to ensure you are who you say you are. The malicious actor will then pose as the service provider to attempt to get you to tell them the code. So basically they will call you pretending to be your service provider and say, hey, we just sent you a code. Can you read it back to us? We have seen some activity on your account. We wanna make sure that this code is you. So once you provide the code to the malicious actor, they then provide that code back to the service provider who's on another line. You've now just authorized them to be able to order equipment on your behalf. They're then most likely going to order multiple phones that will be shipped to their location. There's very little recourse once that phone is ordered and shipped as they're typically shipped next day. The malicious actors will then typically sell the phones to an unsuspecting buyer. And once the fraud is reported, the stolen phones will be deactivated and the, and the phones will no longer work on it, will no longer operate on any mobile phone carrier. Both you and the buyer are left on the hook for the phones. Please be wary of any request for verification codes, especially when you didn't initiate the request for the code. You could be getting scammed. Online shopping and COVID-19. COVID-19 has caused a dramatic increase in online shopping throughout the course of the pandemic. And reports show that online sales grew 76% in June of 2020. It is easier and safer for your health to expose yourself to as few people as possible during the pandemic. Shopping online has risks involved while not related to your health. They can cause stress and even monetary losses. Next, I will talk about how to keep yourself and your personal information safe while shopping online. Shop trusted retailers. Cyber criminals will often create fake online businesses to steal your credit card info and other personal details. Skip the link in your email that looks legit and browse to the retailer directly, ensuring you aren't visiting a fake online business. Too good to be true. Everyone likes a bargain, but a sale or discount on name brand or designer items may be an attempt to steal your information or money or the items may be counterfeit. Either way, you didn't get what you paid for and the deal was too good to be true. Look beyond the lock. The secure padlock icon in the address bar is no longer a verification that a site is safe. Cyber criminals have started purchasing SSL certificates, secure socket layer certificates, which is what the secure padlock is intended to verify. The secure padlock verifies that the information from your device to the recipient's device is encrypted. Sending encrypted payment information to a cyber criminal is still sending the information to a cyber criminal. Please remember if you are shopping at a legitimate business and you don't see the secure padlock, you should not continue with that purchase. Sometimes an SSL certificate will expire and it has to be renewed and reinstalled by the retailer. Stay strong, go long. When it comes to passwords, longer is better. You should try to use passphrases of at least 16 characters. Treasure Island Beach is my favorite. Would take a millennium to crack using standard brute force methods and doesn't contain guessable information such as dates, ages, pets, or kids' names. When available, you should also use two-factor authentication. Unsolicited communication. Be sure to watch out for unsolicited emails and texts, even from companies you know. Clicking on a link in an email from an unknown source may install malicious software on your computer or take you to a fake website posing as the real thing, where you may be prompted to enter login credentials or other personal information. Tracking notifications. Beware of fraudulent package tracking emails that attempt to trick you into clicking on the tracking link. If you aren't expecting a tracking notification email, it is probably a scam. If you want to view your tracking information to track your package, you should have received an email with an order verification from the retailer that you purchased from. You can check with them. They should have sent that tracking number and then you can go directly to the tracking site, whether it's UPS, FedEx, uh, even Amazon, uh, USPS. Use credit. 
Use credit when possible as most credit card companies offer $0 liability fraud protection. Avoid public Wi-Fi. Don't shop online when connected to public Wi-Fi. Your online activities could be spied upon by malicious actors on the same network. This is called a man in the middle attack. And there you can see on that slide, there's a picture of a tracking text message that's received. Um, I actually looked, just looked this up in Google and that code was on seven or eight different uh, text message images that popped up in the you know, top 25 search results of Google. So be wary of that guys, that is a fake uh, tracking e uh, text message. So they're not just coming through email, they're getting your cell phones as well with text. Keep it up to date. Make sure your internet browser is up to date. Your internet browsers have built in security against malicious websites and are often able to warn you if the site you're about to visit is fake or dangerous. Make sure your browser is up to date to take advantage of the latest security features. Check out as guest. By checking out as a guest, you are preventing the online retailer from storing your account and financial information. Don't save your payment information. If you do create an, on, an account while shopping online, many retailers give you the option to save your payment information to make future purchases more convenient. However, if the retailer is breached, your financial information could be stolen. It's safer not to save your payment information. And lastly, report it. If you are the victim of a scam or spot one, share the information with your friends, family, and neighbors, and you can report it to ftc.gov slash complaint. Reporting scams helps the FTC track the tactics and movements of the cyber criminals. Before we end, I want to show you a few videos by the FTC. Scammers are taking advantage of the coronavirus outbreak. FTC tip number one, hang up on robocalls. Scammers are calling to pitch everything from fake coronavirus treatments to work-at-home schemes to get your money and personal information. FTC tip number two, ignore offers for vaccinations and home test kits. Right now, scammers are selling products to treat or prevent the coronavirus with no evidence that they work. FTC tip number three. Scammers and sometimes well-meaning people share information that hasn't been verified. Before you pass information on, check trusted sources like federal, state, and local government websites. FTC tip number four. Know who you're buying from. Online sellers may claim to have in-demand products like cleaning, household, and health and medical supplies when they don't. FTC tip number five, don't respond to calls, texts, or emails about money from the government. Anyone who tells you that they can get you the money now is a scammer. FTC tip number six, don't click on links from sources you don't know. It's a good time to update your anti-malware software. FTC tip number seven, watch for emails claiming to be from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The agency doesn't email people directly. For the most up-to-date information, visit the CDC and World Health Organization websites. FTC tip number eight, do your homework when it comes to donations, whether through charities or crowdfunding sites. If someone wants donations in cash, by gift card, or by wiring money, don't do it. FTC tip number nine, don't click on links in emails or texts you didn't expect. They might look real, but scammers could be phishing for your personal information. FTC tip number 10. Stay in the know. Find out about the latest coronavirus scams by visiting ftc.gov slash coronavirus and bbb.org slash coronavirus. FTC tip number 11. When you spot a scam, tell your friends and neighbors so they can avoid it. Then report the scam to ftc.gov slash complaint. I will get with Candace and see if we can post this video to the portal or a link to the video if we post it on YouTube or Vimeo. I hope everyone enjoyed today's presentation. I'm sorry I was unable to be here with you live today. If you have any questions, please send them to jkblive at johnknox.com with cybersecurity and the subject, and we will try to respond and answer as many questions as possible. Thank you.